So you've seen the recent two minute papers video on Google's AI, stable diffusion on steroids. And you're like, ooh, how do I try that myself? I'd like me some of that. Well, with the help of this video, you can. Here it is, Google prompt to prompt, released yesterday, updated readme as of six hours ago, as of the making of this video. So let's dive into this. There are a couple of other versions of this here. There's cross attention there and another cross attention stable diffusion. Links are down in the description, but I'm just going to be looking at the Google prompt to prompt today. What are you going to need to follow along with this tutorial? Well, you're going to need a computer running Anaconda. You could, of course, use Miniconda or anything else, but just going to anaconda.com, downloading, installing and running Anaconda is the super easy way. You're going to need to download the code as well there. So git clone it and change into your newly created directory. I'm going to do that now. There I am in my prompt to prompt directory. Now, if you've already got a stable diffusion or diffusers environment, you can just pip install notebook and IPy widgets into that environment and you are up and running, ready to go. If you haven't, if you just want to create one from scratch purely to play with prompt to prompt, then do create a new environment. So there it is, Conda create minus minus name diffusers two, I've called mine and I am using Python 3.9. So let me just activate that new environment I have just created. I have of course created it before and tested all this along the way. So the next thing you will need is PyTorch. You can just go to PyTorch org and here is a grid with all the different things so maybe you've got linux pip cuda 11.6 exactly like i have so you can copy paste and install pytorch that way or maybe you've got an amd card so you'd copy and paste that one or maybe you're using conda so you copy and paste that one maybe you're using windows so you copy and paste that one all sorts of different ways to install pytorch install the one that is appropriate to you you will then need to install a few extra packages as you can see there, I have got diffusers, notebook, IPy widgets, OpenCV, Python, TQDM, transformers, and FTFY. That's all you need. That's it. You've done it. You've, in, you've downloaded all the code and you've installed everything that you need. You can now run Jupyter Notebook. Just a quick note, I do like to copy the notebooks first before I run them. So here we have a little copy. I've called it Nerdy Rodent Prompt to Prompt Stable Diffusion. So I am running that one because when you change things in here, it makes changes to the notebook code. So very, very easy to run. You just click run, run, run. If you want to, you will have to log in there. I, of course, have already logged in to my Hugging Face account and I'm already ready to go on this, but you may need to do that. There's a link there for uh, following the instructions for how to get my token and put that in there. Like I say, I have already logged in. If you're running uh, on a 12 gig GPU, then you'll have to set low resource there to true. I am not running on a 12 gig GPU, so I can just click run. So let's just keep clicking run and we'll, we'll click run on this one as well and generate an image while we go through what it's doing. So here it is, cross attention visualization. First, let's generate an, and visualize the cross attention maps for each word in the prompt. Notice how we normalize each map 0 to 1. So here I am with my prompt, a painting of a rodent eating a burger. There's the painting of the rodent eating the burger. And there is the visualization of each of the maps for that prompt. Brilliant stuff. OK. So what have we got next? We've got a painting of a rodent eating a burger and a painting of a lion eating a burger. So there we've got the rodent. There we've got the lion. As you can see, without prompt to prompt, they are two very, very different pictures. But if we do it with prompt to prompt, then ooh, there we go. Look at that. Look at that. The lion is very, very similar to the rodent. OK. So what if we want to do more things? Modify cross-attention injection steps for specific words. So here we can reduce the restriction on our lion by reducing the number of cross-attention injection with respect to the word lion. So there it is, lion is down at 0.4. So as you can see, that is now a very different lion, very different lion. Okay, what else can you do? Here, local edit. Lastly, if you want to preserve the original burger, we can apply local edit with respect to the rodent and the lion. So there we're doing the, the prompt blending rodent lion. And as you can see there, see that it was, it was a different burger that time, but now the burger is very similar to the original burger. So it's very, very good at keeping the original image there and changing it to whatever you want. Ooh, what else can we do? What else can we do? Okay. So here we've got a painting of a rodent eating a burger and a painting of a rodent eating lasagna. Hmm. So what happens this time? Well, without prompt to prompt, as you can see, the burger changes quite a lot. We've got quite a few changes and the rodent has changed as well. So there's lots of changes. But if we run that with prompt to prompt and there we have the rodent eating the lasagna 
and it's very, very similar. So we've got a very, very similar rodent, but the burger has changed into some lasagna. And what about if you want to change it in, in other ways? Here it is, a painting of a rodent eating a burger and a photo of a rodent eating a burger. So now you get the burger and that's turned into a little bit of a photo there. But the rodent, as you can see, is very, very different. Now we have a photo rather than a painting of a rodent and that has turned into a photo of a burger. Those chips are no longer painted either. So very, very highly controllable. What else have we got here? So a photo of a house on a mountain and a photo of a house on a mountain in autumn. As you can see, it's kept the house reasonably similar, but the trees now have that lovely autumnal orange to them. And you can also, of course, do the same thing in winter. It's turned it into a little bit more of a winter lodge there, but obviously there you can see the landscape has become more snowy. Other things you can do with it here. So we've got some soup and some ice cream soup. And there it's blending the soup. So it's making the, the two prompts, soup and ice cream soup. And there, yeah, it's, it's the same bowl, but instead I've got a lovely, delicious dollop of ice cream on there. Now you can also do the attention re-weighting as well. So here is a fantasy art photo of a nerdy steampunk rodent. And I'm putting three times more attention on the word steampunk. Well, it's actually five times more attention. Let's do it with three times more attention. And we'll, we'll run this cell just to show you what happens when you change the attention on specific words. So there it is, fantasy art photo of a nerdy steampunk rodent. And we're putting three times more attention rather than five on the original one there to the steampunk rodent. And there, as you can see, it is a lot more steampunk. That is a lot more steampunk, that rodent. Okay, what else can we do? Well, we, we, can, we can change things using sort of masks. So here I've got a fantasy art painting of a pink rodent on a bike and I'm creating that twice, there's two of those but we don't want pink bikes, we only want pink rodents. So we're going to reduce the amount of pink it applies locally on the bike. So there we've got the word pink, so we're, we're getting that, we're getting the equalizer for that. And then we're blending bike and bike, but we're making it less pink. So we've got minus two on that one. So as you can see on that image, we've got the pink rodent and the bike itself is also pink. But on this one, we've got the pink rodent and a little bit of masking going on here. So you can see that's less pink, but the bike itself is much more like a normal non-pink bike. Brilliant. Um, you can add croutons to things as well, you, again, using this sort of weighting. So here we've got our soup and ice cream soup with croutons, but where, where are my croutons? Where are my croutons? I can see the ice cream in the soup, but there aren't any croutons. Well, you can increase the weight on croutons there. So there I've got three, many <laughs> three times more croutons. Let's just run that cell. So I've got my soup, got my ice cream soup with croutons. You're blending the soup and the soup. And here you've got the equalizer croutons three. So three times more attention to the word croutons, very much like weighting if you're used to uh, adding weights. And there we've got three times more weight on the croutons. So the lump of ice cream has instead turned into croutons. Mmm, delicious ice cream soup with croutons. And of course you can do that on any image. So here we've got potatoes and fried potatoes and they don't, they don't look very fried, do they? they actually look fairly similar. So instead, if you increase the attention on the word fried, so there we've got getting all those prompts fried 10. So that's putting 10 times more attention on the word fried. And as you can see, your potatoes are a lot more fried. How much fun is that? Now, if you want to have even more fun, then I suggest you click on one of these two videos.